Hello everybody, this is just going to be a quick uh, tutorial for the uh, basics of Star Trek Online, mostly for my friends, although I'll probably make this public just for fun. Uh, I'm no near an expert um, in Star Trek Online, but I found that recently with playing with friends that some of them did not know some of the features of the game, so I figured that I would just quickly go over them for them. Uh, so if you're expecting a big complex tutorial, don't count on it. So anyway, here I am. I'm just playing the Federation for now with my uh, character. And I do have a Klingon character as well, and I may show that in the video, maybe not. But I just want to give you an overall tutorial of this screen. A lot of people seem to get confused on what is available. So obviously over here we have the chat window. Not really going to bore you much with that. It's pretty straightforward. Chat and everything. NPCs, NPC combat. If combat this one is for just a channel I made. Uh, you can access your emotes simply by clicking this icon emotes and you get a list of your emotes that you can use for whatever you like. Um, in there you also have various other options. You can look for your friends, use online, send them messages, you can uh, do notifications, change your mic if you're using the in-game chat, set a status, a social kind of status to your friends. Um, but I'm going to skip that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first Sorry, the second panel I like to look at is here, which is basically um, your shield, strength, weapons, things like that. So if you look here, uh, you will notice that I have a nice balance of 50-50-50 for everything. So 50 weapons, uh, 50 shields, 50 engines, and uh, auxiliary power of 50. Right above it, you have the four different sections here, which allows you to change the focus. So for instance, you can focus primarily on the attack, and you'll notice the weapons go up to 100. Uh, these two go drop down to 25, and that's 50. You can focus on a shield, so your shield will be up to 100. These are 25, and that's 50. And you can focus on engines, which will make you a bit faster. And you can do a balance, which allows you to be all the way through on the 50-50. Um, this allows you to change the way you want to look at it if you want to change the balance yourself to modify it in, in any way that you like. So if you want it to be 65, let's say for engines and everything else to be different rating, you can. Um, you can also save them if you like to customize it a bit more. But I typically find that you can just simplify by picking what you like. The next panel here is your shields, so forward, aft, right and left. Um, what you can do with this is if you are getting damage, you, let's say you're being shot on your right shield, you can actually click this button here and it will allow you to transfer your shields equally to your right or to your left, your forward or backward shields. If you right click on your portrait, you can, um, if you're in a group, you can group, set yourself to be the same level as other people, etc. Um, and this is just your crew rate and hull repair and hull percentage. This of course is your speed, so you can increase it slow it down and go reverse if you want to drive backwards okay this also is an interesting panel this is for your weapons this lets you fire all your beam weapons all your torpedo weapons and everything weapons so I find that a lot of people are pressing one two three or clicking over here well I get lazy and I usually just hit all weapons because I'm crazy I'm sure there's better tactics in your weapons planning and what you want to shoot in what order uh, at higher levels you'll get these icons here which will focus on the type of character you are and gives you abilities that can buff and debuff other players uh, in my case here I have a uh, weapon system that makes my R mine and my friend's weapons 25% le uh, less cost uh, I can also reduce the damage to shield and regeneration power increase I can also increase the flight speed, turn radius and sort of taunting for tanking, threat generation, such as that. Um, the next one is your shortcut where you hit one zero to perform an action. If you want, if you have more icons, you can click this button here and you can say, well, I want two panels or three panels, etc. And you can then, I typically run with two. And this, of course, you can either use the keyboards one to zero, C is control one to zero. You also have A's one to zero to perform those actions. Uh, if you do you realize I have some extra powers here? Some of them I find that when you get a new ship and stuff, you don't really see your powers. You can either press P or click this little tricorder thing, and you will get a list of your abilities that you can then drag to your bar. Now, some of these I find are kind of redundant. Uh, for instance, if you already have the attack 
sorry, attack fire, attract fire on your quick bar here. I don't particularly feel that you need to make several copies of it over here, although it is, you know, the C4, C4, etc. So you don't need to make extra copies of it if you don't need to, especially if it's hiding up in a third rank or not. But sometimes you have things that like the data recorder or distribute shields, which I find very handy, that don't show up in your bar. Another important one that a lot of people forget is the evasive actions one, which I seem not to be able to find in here. Evasive actions. I don't see why it's there. It's this guy here, evasive maneuvers, which basically for, in this case here, eight seconds increases a lot of my speed and powers, uh, which is very handy. There it is, especially when you're really slow Federation ship. So you can drag these down here and you can lock your tray so you can't move stuff off of it if you like. And so those are those ones. Obviously, these ones up here, probably most people are familiar with. These are your crew that you've hired and you've put into the positions, whether it's an engineering power, uh, whether it's a science power, etc. And so based off the people you hire and their abilities, they appear here for you to use. And you can see that's alt keys to manage it. If you look at the top right, our little solar system map, we have the ability to leave the system anytime you want, transwarp to beam around faster, scan the area, uh, which will basically tell you how many anomalies there are for crafting and such as that. Uh, you can call Starfleet where you'll be able to look at different quests that are available, episodes, uh, stuff that you have in progress, logs, and things like that. Uh, the Zen store, if you have money and you wish to spend it. Uh, the the lithium store, which allows you to buy various things from these people for the lithium. This one here allows you to deal with duty officers, which we will talk about in a second. Um, then we have PvP EQs, and we have if you're in a fleet, which I'm not. On the right, you have a different icon, which lets you exchange your dilithium for Zen. Uh, if you're doing um, crafting PvP EQs, you can actually go to the bridge of your starship and walk around your starship. So you can go check out the mess hall, um, the bridge. Uh, barracks, things like that, and sometimes you get vendors in there that you can buy basic stuff as well as places you can put trophies and whatever you need to do. Uh, you can invite people to your bridge. Uh, bulletins are for in-game bulletins. Music player actually lets you set it up so you can play your own music. Uh, that's on your computer. Uh, credits, pretty straightforward, notification settings. Um, this one here is help. If you need help, make a ticket or just a basic computer support. Graphic settings. This tells you if you're in social, so if your friends are online or not. Uh, if you have mail, which I do, I sold some stuff on the auction house. Um, and then we have inventory to see your stuff and a item for your character sheets. And then you have a calendar, or sorry, the map, system map, galaxy map, etc. And of course, the time. Now, Going from there, if you do want to see your characters, this is kind of an important thing, how this works is you essentially have your stats of your character, your equipment you're carrying, you have your ship stats, the equipment that's in your ship. Devices or items you can put, like shield regeneration, things that are very short-lived, and you can put them in here and they'll appear in your bar, and your different characters that are with you. From the Career option: You can fire people, hire people, or sorry, train them or give them raises um, to higher ranking skills. You're allowed to train them if you have any skill points available. And remember, these are based off your like the rank of that character. So if you promote them, you can get this power, etc. Uh, traits I won't really go into. Stations is basically what these people do. So these are their different positions. You can give them, etc. Away team if you want them to come, or if you want it to be a generic red shirt guy. And I won't bore you with reputation at this stage. Um, the other thing is we were talking about um, duty officers. Duty officers are a little bit new to me myself, but basically if you think about it, for those who played Star Wars um, online, you know, Star Wars The Old Republic, you can essentially send your people out to do missions. Now it's not your bridge officers, it will be other people, so you can essentially find missions for them to do and be like, oh, hey, I want them to schedule a hazard system overhaul exercise and you get this stuff as a reward so you can plan it, figure out who you want to send on it, 
assign them an officer, tells you, you know, critical chance, yada, 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 start it, and in two hours it will come back if I passed or failed. Um, you can hire more duty officers, you can change your department heads, so if you have multiple people who are in engineering, you can do different things. I won't bore you too much if you explore that. Um, now if we look at leveling, you can, if you click up here, you can see what is upcoming for your characters on the level. Um, if you go to, I don't think I have any points to spend, but typically you will spend point over here if you do. So in theory, you can go to skills and say, okay, well, if I have points, I can spend them here. If you raise them, this thing will tell you what the benefit is for the higher ranking. At a higher level in the game, um, you can then pick different abilities. You can trade these out. So for instance, my main character here has these as her power. If you go into Earth Dog, you can actually retrain some of these for, for example, if you didn't want engineering team 2 for this character, you could pay and have this trained to something different so you can spread it out. Um, let me see what else is there that we can talk about. If you hit I or, or inventory or the icon up here for inventory, you can see that you have the different assets, which is different money in the game. Uh, you can exchange, blah, blah, blah. Your inventory, you can you can sort, just clears everything up. Replicator is interesting. It allows you to sell, like buy basic things or you can sell your stuff that you don't want to, but you sell it about 40% less, like 40% value, where a vendor is usually 50% or higher. So this is usually I use to get rid of trash. And then if you mess up, of course, you can retrieve it and buy it back later. So if I sell that and I'm like, whoopsie daisy, I can come back here and click that. Um, other than that, there's not much else to talk um, about the UI here. Uh, you'll learn lots more by going through tutorials and stuff, but I won't bore you with those. You can figure that on your own. Anyway, that's my first video for this. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure I bored a lot of people, but that's okay. Thank you very much.